If you're looking to improve your Madden 16 game, be sure to stop by MaddenXO.com. There you're going to find the best ebooks on the market, both offensive and defensive. $10 a month gets you access to every single one of their ebooks now through the remainder of this season and on into Madden 17 as well. Again, guys, MaddenXO.com. The link will be in the description. Hey, what is going on, guys? Clickwood here back again, bringing you guys another Madden 16 Ultimate Team video. Guys, today we are taking a look at the budget wide receivers in Madden. Guys, this is probably one of the most important positions in Madden this year, so that's why I really wanted to get it out of the way early. I wanted to tell you guys about some of the players that I found, um, and of course, I want to hear from you guys as well. Who are some budget receivers that you like to use? Let me know in the comments section below, and if you've used any of these guys that are in this video, of course, be sure to let me know what you think about them in the comments as well. Um, if you guys are new to the series, what we basically do here is that we take a look at some cheaper wide receivers and we compare them to more expensive wide receivers and just to let you guys know um, you know obviously most of the time the more expensive receivers are substantially better so we're not saying the budget receivers are better they might just be better for your money so with that being said guys let's hop right into it first comparison of the day we're taking a look at the but the budget jump ball wide receivers so these are guys that are kind of your aggressive catch specialists now Again, I'm not going to say that the guy on the right is better than the one on the left, but I just want you to take a look at some of these attributes because I think a lot of people are really sleeping on this Martavis Bryant Football Outsiders card. And this card is definitely still able to be found on the auction block for pretty cheap. It's going for about 24000 is what I found it for at the time that I made this video. And we're going to be comparing it to Ultimate Legend Des Bryant, the 98 overall, 600,000 coins. Now, obviously, you see on the left there, all of the attributes are either the same or better for Des Bryant. The only thing where Martavis Bryant's actually better is that he is six foot four versus Des being six foot two. But I think that again, what you, if you look at all of the attributes that are really important, I think the things like jumping, you look at catching, you look at catching traffic, spectacular catch, all of those things, acceleration, speed, they're all like one, two, three, four different at the most for Martavis versus Des. And of course, you know, Dez is going to be the better player. But when you're talking about a guy that is, you know, quite a bit cheaper, I mean, he's 576,000 coins cheaper. You're definitely going to get more value, I think, out of Martavis Bryant. So that's why I definitely like this card. I think it's, uh, it's one of the better jump ball wide receivers in this game. It really has great attributes in all of those areas. Now, where it's not so good is after the catch. It does only have an 86 juke and a 78 spin, 73 for strength, you uh, you know, if you're somebody that likes to make blocks with your receivers or things like that, he's not the best at that. But, um, you know, overall, though, I really do think that this is a good card. And it's definitely one where if you're in single coverage against pretty much any corner in the game, you're going to have a good shot to come down with the ball if you've got Martavis Bryant. So definitely check him out. And guys, let's move on to the second comparison. These are a little bit cheaper versions um, of the previous cards. We're going to compare Herman Moore on the left to Doriel Green Beckham. This is the superlatives Doriel Green Beckham. Now, granted, I will say Herman Moore is more expensive because he's rare. Um, he's not a card that's easy to get by any means. He was, a, I think, a limited edition, if I remember correctly, the Herman Moore was. But either way, um, it is going for 225,000 coins, and Doriel Green Beckham's only going for 8,000. Now, the one thing that you're going to notice here is that there's a lot more green on the right side of your screen, which of course means that Doriel Green Beckham has some attributes where he's actually better than Herman Moore. First one is height. He actually is an inch taller. He also has one higher in jumping, which is significant. Um, if you compare the fact that he is one inch taller as well as one in, as well as having one higher for jumping, he is going to go up and get the ball a little bit better. His spectacular catch is also also higher, which is significant because that is one of the attributes, the main attributes that goes into whether or not you make some of those like Odell Beckham one-handed catch type situations. That's definitely something to look into. Now, where he does lag a little bit behind, again, just like the Martavis Bryant, is after the catch. Elusiveness, spin move, juke move, all of that stuff is definitely lower for your Doyle Green Beckham. Um, he also doesn't have as good of release. So if he's getting jammed at the line, he's not quite as good at getting off of that thing. But still, a, a really good card overall. I think a lot of people, again, are sleeping on this superlatives Doyle Green Beckham. He's definitely a good, cheap, budget, jump ball wide receiver. And he's somebody who can, who can go up, just like the Martavis Bryant, and make those one-handed crazy catches. Um, I definitely think that you would like him if you gave him a shot. Now, let's move on, guys, and let's talk about another 
uh, type of wide receiver here. These are your deep threat wide receivers. So these are guys that I, I would consider to be kind of like speed burst type of wide receivers. The guys who have the super high speed numbers, the acceleration and speed, um, along with, you know, good attributes in other areas. But the main thing that we're looking for is that top end speed. So pretty much it has to be a guy that's 95 speed or above. And both of these guys on your screen meet that. On the left side of the screen, we have the uh, Steve Smith Sr., which is, of course, a really good card, a flashback card. The flashback does make it more expensive, of course. Um, you know, if this card was just a standard 97 Elite, it wouldn't be nearly as expensive because it wouldn't be as rare. But at the end of the day, it would still be a pretty expensive card because it does have great attributes. But we're going to compare it to the final edition, Dante Moncrief. And Moncrief, I think, again, this is a newer card that recently came out this week. And again, I think people are sleeping on it because if you look at these attributes, he's really, really good in a lot of areas. First of all, he's quite a bit taller. He's five inches taller than Steve Smith, which is significant. It's definitely something to consider. Now, granted, we're talking about the kind of the, the deep threat ability, so the ability to go on those streaks and beat the defense, so height isn't quite as important, but if you can have height along with the speed, I think that's always a good combination. Now, these guys do have very similar attributes as far as their speeds. They're exactly the same in both speed and acceleration, 95 and 96. Their catching is a little bit different, though. Steve Smith does have better catching attributes. There's no doubt about it. 98 catching, 99 catching traffic, 97 spec catch. Great, great attributes there for him. But Moncrief isn't terrible in any of those areas by any means. 92 catching, 92 catching traffic, and a 95 spectacular catch. So I definitely think that Dante Moncrief is somebody that can go up and beat the defense on those deep balls. The other thing that I really like about him is that he has 93 release, which if you're looking at these, these speedy wide receivers and guys that don't necessarily have much besides that, they need to be able to get off of that that jam at the line. They need to be able to go up and uh, you know push the guy off of him and get deep and get that separation. And that's something that I think Moncrief would actually do better than Steve Smith based on his attributes. The release is 12 higher. The strength is only two lower. So you know these cards are very very similar in in strength, but this that release is very very different. And he could actually do a much better job than Steve Smith getting away from the defense if they decide to go up and do a jam at the line. So uh, again, check out Dante Moncrief. Now, one other card that I wanted to take a look at here for the deep threats is a gold card. Now, <laughs> it's kind of funny because we've got so many cheap elites now, but I think this card is really, really good at doing what we were just talking about, beating the defense deep. Uh, you look at this Kevin White here, it's only 10,000 coins. He actually has 97 speed and 95 acceleration. We're comparing him to Percy Harvin, Campus Hero. Both of these cards are Campus Heroes, obviously Harvin being the elite, Kevin White being just the gold. But Kevin White has him in a couple of important areas. First of all, straight end speed. He is higher, too higher. Acceleration, he is a little bit lower. He is only a 95 versus a 98. So the actual speed on these guys is going to be pretty similar. But when he gets down the field and you're throwing up that deep rainbow pass, Kevin White's going to do a better job because of a few different things. First of all, again, he's got the high end speed, which is a little bit faster. That should be able to get him the separation that he needs from the cornerback. And then also, he is six foot three. The other thing that he has that I really like about Kevin White is that he has, again, the high release number. 88 for a release. That is really, really good. 76 for strength is actually not bad for a, a wide receiver either. So this is a card who can definitely do a great job going deep. Very similar to the Brashad Perriman from earlier, earlier in the year, but actually a little bit better than that card in my personal opinion because he has the high release and the speed and the acceleration and the fact, of course, that he's six foot three, Harvin only being five foot eleven. So definitely a really, really nice card here uh, with your Kevin White. Next thing that we're going to take a look at here is possession wide receivers. Now, these are guys that have good route running, good catch and traffic, things like that. They might be a little bit smaller, uh, so they're not necessarily going to be the guys that you'd want to go up and get the aggressive catches. Some of them can do that, and I think the card on the right here, Keenan Allen, which is the team captain, only goes for 14,000 coins, and it is 90 overall. Um, I think this is one that could potentially go up and make some of those spectacular catches as well because he does have a good spec catch attribute, great catch in traffic, great catching, um, and he is six foot two with 91 jumping as well. Now, where you really want to see these possession receivers come in is that you need good acceleration, in my opinion. You need good catching, catch in traffic, spectacular catch, 
is good. Certainly, you want that. I don't think it's quite as important. Um, and then their route running, of course, needs to be high as well. And then the other thing, of course, if you're somebody that likes to make the short passes, like, a, you know, the, the quick comeback routes or the screen passes, things like that, sometimes these guys might need to have elusiveness and uh, the types of moves after the catch. That's one thing where Keenan Allen does definitely lag behind Wes Welker here. Um, Welker, of, of course, a flashback card. Again, probably a little bit overpriced because he's a flashback card. But, um, you know, still, we have to look at the, the pure numbers of what he's selling for. Um, he does have 93 juking and 95 spin move on the Welker, whereas your Keenan Allen's only got an 86 and an 80, and his elusiveness is actually 20 lower than Welker. So he's not somebody that's great after the catch, unfortunately, but he is going to be able to make the catches at the yard at the yard markers uh, to get those first downs and to really keep your drive going and I think that's what Keenan Allen's main job is for most offenses if you've got him he is six foot two though he does have decent speed it's a little bit higher than Wes Welker 89 speed isn't spectacular by any means at this point in Madden but it is it is usable still it's not horrible um, his jumping is also really, really good at a 91 for a possession receiver. So I really like Keenan Allen. I think he's a good overall wide receiver as well. Um, again, he's not great after the catch, but he does make so many plays in, you know, if, if, if he's in traffic or if he's running like a 10 yard in route, things like that. This is the type of card that you want to use. Of course, if you can have the Welker, go ahead and purchase him if you want to. But um, Keenan Allen is kind of a cheaper version that can do a lot of the same things. The other card here, um, as far as the possession wide receivers go, is uh, Amari Cooper. And this is a 91 overall card. I think a lot of people have come to understand that this is arguably the best budget wide receiver in the game right now. He is only 8,000 coins. We're going to compare him to Jerry Rice on the left. 98 overall legend. Monster card, obviously, with Jerry Rice. You know, Rice being arguably, well, not even arguably. He's the best wide receiver of all time, especially in terms of statistics. But uh, as far as his attributes go, he's not substantially better than Amari Cooper in most of these areas. He is higher in, of course, things like catching, catching traffic, uh, spec catch, all of those types of things. But he's actually not substantially higher in most of these attributes. Really, the only things where Jerry Rice is substantially better are things like your strength. And like, of course, strength is somewhat important, but I don't really consider it to be a huge thing of importance. His release is also quite a bit higher at 96 versus 90. But in most of these attributes, Rice is only one or two higher. And the other thing that I like about Amari Cooper is that he does have 95 speed as well. So Cooper is great in catching, catching traffic. Has great release as well. I mean, it's not the best ever, but it's still very, very good, especially for a card 8,000 coins. And 94 route running is very, very good as well. So um, I definitely like this Amari Cooper, and he's somebody that can do a little bit of damage after the catch as well. I actually like Amari Cooper better than I like Keenan Allen, but there are, of course, areas where Keenan Allen is better. So, um, you know, look at your team, look at what you like to do with your receivers, and then kind of find the guy that matches, you know, exactly what it is that you want to do with your wide receiver before you make your decision. Decision. So last on our list, guys, we want to take a look at some guys who are great run blockers. I know a lot of people like to run block with their wide receivers. I do as well. It's not as important, I don't think, in Madden this year because you just get those random animations where your where your wide receiver crushes cornerbacks. But um, still, I like to look at the attributes because they are important. Um, of course, what I did here was I actually removed agility from the list and I replaced it with impact block at the very end. So your bottom three attributes are really what we're looking at here with these cards. Of course, the other things do matter. Matter, but I like to substitute these guys onto the field in obvious running situations where, you know, it's it's third and one type of a thing, fourth and one type of a thing where I know I've got to run or if I'm at the goal line, I'll probably consider putting these guys on the field because speed isn't quite as important at the goal line as it is other places on the field. But I really do like this Anquan Bolden, the seasoned veterans item. He's really, really solid overall, but he also has great run block attributes. Now, Brandon Marshall team of the year is better in most of these things. I'm not going to lie. He is 200,000 coins though. So, I mean, that is a, a substantial upgrade in price to get somebody that's actually better than Bolden. Bolden has 71 run blocking, 87 strength is very, very high for a wide receiver. And his impact block is actually still solid here at a 70. Now, keep in mind, 70 isn't a great attribute overall, but when you compare it to other wide receivers, it's actually pretty good. So uh, Bolden again here, 
solid card, 20,000 coins. You can definitely get him for cheap and, uh, you know, again, substitute him on the field in those situations where, you know, your, your opposing defense is going to know that you're probably going to be running anyway and you just need to, to kind of bulldoze them. And then uh, last but not least, guys, more run blocking wide receivers here. We do have uh, on the left side of your screen, we've got Heinz Ward. Now, this is an elite legend item, of course, and we're going to compare it actually to uh, a gold Josh Morgan. Now, this is a BCA card, so it's much more difficult to find, but I have actually seen them on the auction block from time to time. So you might be able to go out there and find a Josh Morgan from time to time. Again, he's not always going to be out there. But Josh Morgan has some awesome attributes for run blocking, specifically 90 strength. That is crazy, crazy high. Now, he isn't anywhere near as good as Heinz Ward and impact block, but Ward is, of course, known for being a, a monster blocker just in general. He's one of the hardest hitting blockers that has ever played wide receiver in the NFL. So, uh, again, Heinz Ward, definitely a great blocker, but I think Josh Morgan can do a great job, and he's only 1,500 coins. You could certainly consider, again, trying him out if you see him on the auction block, see if you like him, and if you don't, what happens? You lose 150 coins if you sell him back, so it's not a big deal. But I want to hear from you guys. Do you guys like this series? Are you having fun with it? Let me know in the comments section below. I'm definitely enjoying making the budget series, and I hope that you guys are enjoying the series as well. Um, if you are, again, do me a favor. Click that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. And let me know in the comments section below, guys, what do you want to see next? What position is it that you're interested in seeing a budget episode of next? Thanks again so much, guys. Hope you learned something, and uh, I will talk to you guys again soon.